Hi, I'm Norman Hawes. I work here at Crutch Shield. I've been here for more than a decade. And today we're going to show you the techniques and the steps for installing a speaker in a wall. The, we're not going to show you how to hook it up, the wiring or anything like that. This is just the actual uh, mechanical steps for how to locate where to put the speakers, how to uh, use a stud finder, um, how to cut the sheetrock. We'll show you how to use a template. We'll give you some tips on how to paint it if you want to do that. Um, but it's very, it's, when you see it, you'll go, I can do that. And it really is easy. Once you've seen what the steps are and it's demystified, you'll be like, I can do this. So there are some tools that you're going to need, and you probably already have most of these. If not, your neighbor will probably have them. Sheetrock saw, Phillips screwdriver, torpedo level, stud finder, and a drill. We're going to, we built a fake wall, basically, and we're going to put a camera on the back side and the front side so you can actually see the studs are 16 on center. It's the same size sheetrock, the same depth, same thickness, stuff like that. These are a pair of in-wall speakers. We're actually going to unbox just like you would, and we're going to do that right now. So when you get the box, the very first thing that you're going to see is the instructions and the warranty and stuff like that. But one thing it has, which can be fairly useful, this looks like a plain, ordinary piece of cardboard. This is the rough-in template this is the exact size that you're going to use to cut the hole in the wall. We're actually going to take a pencil and go all the way around and show you, not show you how to do that. But this is, cut the hole this size, the speaker will just plop right in there and you're good to go. But this is awesome to have. Don't throw this away. <laughs> These are 8-inch speakers. And when, when somebody says they're putting in 8-inch speakers, they're referring to the size of the woofer. This actually has the woofer, and this actually is eight inches. That's the reason why the name. And then there's a tweeter, which you, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's actually a tweeter right here. And I'm gonna pop this grill off, and sometimes it can be a bit of a pain. This is actually the eight inch woofer, and this is the tweeter. And the tweeter is aimable, so that it's actually looking directly at whatever your seating area is. One of the other things that's going to be in the box is this clear piece of plastic. And, it, and you're like going, packing material? No. What it's used for is once you have the speaker mounted in the wall, and suppose you want to paint the frame, this actually goes over and it presses in, just like the grill did that we just took out, so that you can safely paint all this, especially if you've hired uh, painters to come in, they're going to paint the wall, redo it. You want to save these pieces of plastic because when you do it, it makes sure the speaker itself doesn't get damaged. When you finish and the paint's dried, there's two little holes here you can actually take and wiggle it and pop it back out and you can put your grill back in. So useful thing to save. So the next thing that you probably want to do is figure out where you're going to put the speakers. In this particular case, I'm going to use something called a stud finder. And this is, there's a bunch of them out there. Get the kind that actually has an LCD display and as well as the light that lights up. The advantage is with the LCD display, you can actually see the edge of the stud as you come up, and I'll give you an example. We know that we want to put the um, new in-wall speaker somewhere in the wall, but we don't know exactly where the studs are. So we're actually gonna just take the stud finder, put it up against the wall, and you want it flat up against the wall. Press the button, and it'll light up and beep and let you know it's ready. So we're gonna go and just slide it slowly, just like I'm doing it here. And you'll watch on the display, it'll actually start lighting up. See, it's starting to sense it. There you go. And you put a little tiny tick mark right there, just enough so you can see it. Go on the other side of the stud, make sure it's flat, press it, and you come this way. And watch what happens. There you go. So we found one stud here, we want to find where the, the other side of the stud is. So we're going to do the same thing. There you go. And you put a check mark there. So now we know that from this point to this point, hopefully it's just hollow, nothing behind it at all. So now we know roughly where the studs are. You want to mount the speaker so that it's roughly centered between them so that there's as much air gap on this side as there is on this side. It doesn't have to be exact. It could be more one or the other. 
but the key is you want to make sure that you're no closer, and typically two fingers width, um, from the edge of the stud. So I've got the little tick mark there, I've got a little tick mark here. So for here, I'm just actually going to center it. Now one of the things you'll find very helpful, this is called a torpedo level. The purpose of this is, is that you're going to set it on top of, and you can do all this with one hand, and there is a bubble right here in the center. You want to get the bubble as much as you can centered between the two lines. There's a couple different ways of doing it. I do this a lot, so I just hold it up and just go like this, like this, like this, and like this. Another way of doing it is, and I didn't think about it, you can actually buy the little thumbtacks and just put it in a couple of places to hold it and you can go around like that. But if you're pretty conscientious, you, but you gotta be pressing fairly steady to do it. So there's your opening. And what's cool is, is that um, at least two fingers width, and in this case it's probably three, but at least two fingers away from the stud. It's square and another tool that you're gonna wanna have this is called a sheetrock saw, and very useful. And you want the kind, they make them out of wood, they make them out of plastic. The, if you get the kind that's plastic like this, it's easier to hit and it, for going in. They also make one with bigger heads, stuff like that. These are only like eight or 10 bucks. Lowe's, Home Depot, stuff like that. What we're gonna do is you actually put it right up in the corner and you're actually gonna cut the outside edge all the way around. When this piece comes out from the wall, you should still be able to see the pencil marks all the way around. The reason why you want to do that is that when you put the, the speaker in, if you've cut the outside edge a little bit, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room so that if the speaker is not quite straight, you can actually got a little room left or right to, to true it up. So all you do is set it up on here and it's going to sound weird, you just smack it. And the... And... Now this is a fake wall, can you tell? <laughs> so as you, if you start doing this, aiming it more down like that, this helps the saw stay even all the way down. So as you get to the bottom, just like at the top, you started straight in and as you got, you started doing this, but as you get down toward the bottom, start going back like that. So now when you finish, pull it back out, and again, we're just outside the hole and smack it again. What you can do is sometimes this will just fall naturally, but a lot of times you need to just pop it out like that. What we're going to do right now is, is that we're going to take the speaker and put it in the wall. And one of the things I'm going to show you is these are called dog legs. When you take, when you get ready to mount this, take each of these dog legs and just wiggle them in the, and go all the way around. And the reason why you do that is that on the front of the speaker, you'll never see these once the grill is on, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws, and they're on the outside frame of the speaker. When you go to put the speaker in and you start tightening these screws, the dog leg actually pops out, but can't go any further. And as I'm screwing it down, the dog leg will actually work its way down and the sheetrock is right here and it forms a sandwich. So dog legs are set up, you've loosened them, they're all in line with each other, they're not pointing out and you take the bottom of the speaker, just set it right here and it literally will just lay, sometimes you gotta wiggle a little bit, there you go, and just let it sit on the bottom. When you 
set the speaker in here, take your level, which I so conveniently did not lay out. Where did it, oh, here it is. Did have it. Lay it on top. And if you look right here, you'll see where the it's off a little bit. You actually take the speaker and push it in the direction that the, the bubble is pointing, and that will level it up. So if you look at it, you'll see that the bubble is now centered between it. So now what we're going to do is literally, and I would recommend that you use a screwdriver rather than a drill to tighten these things up. Um, you can use a drill. You should be able to see the, where the dog leg is popping out. When you're putting the speaker in, you do one corner and then do the other diagonal corner. And if you notice in the video, you'll have seen where the dog leg popped out and is grabbing the sheetrock. Just stop as soon as it starts getting a little bit more tension, just stop, it's all you need. You do not need to crush the sheetrock. It's just it literally, the sheetrock is just sandwich, it's sandwich material, filler material. If you have a drill and the drill has a clutch, and most people go, what's a clutch? If you look on the drill, you'll see something with a whole bunch of numbers. And then there'll be one additional that looks like it's thread or something like that. That means you're not using the clutch at all. The clutch is really, really useful. So take the clutch and put it on the lowest number, which is number one. And we're gonna do like one of the middle ones right here. There you go. Do you hear that clicking sound? When you hear that, now it had on the lowest setting, the tip is no longer turning and it prevents the screw from being stripped out. So um, now I've got this on the lowest setting and it just barely did it. If you don't feel confident doing this, just use a regular screwdriver and just turn it in by hand. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go through and do the rest of these. There you go. There's a speaker in the wall. Hey. So now if you want, you can take the level, put it back here, and actually this is a pretty good point because I was working with this. I actually torqued the speaker a little bit. See how it's off? So if you notice you've done that, really easy to correct. All we're going to do is we're going to slightly loosen these screws up and we're going to just take the entire speaker and just tilt it just a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that. If you look, all I did was, because the bubble was off that way, I pushed this way and this way, and I made the speaker turn just a little bit. And if you look, see how I actually went a little bit too far. So you can actually just tap it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. See how the bubble is centered? And I keep my fingertip here because I know that that's correct. And I tighten one up. I tighten the second one up. Now, once I've done the top two, I just take the level and it's perfect in between. So now once you've got the speaker in there, you need the grill. Key thing about the grill is there's actually cloth on the back side of this here. And if you paint this, which some people do, the key is when you're painting it, um, totally cool to paint this, but you've got to peel this paper off. Or it's not, it's a cloth. And it's, it's got a little bit of sticky on the back side. See how I'm peeling it off? And if you paint this, there's a process called stippling, which is just a fancy way of saying you would take a paintbrush, instead of doing strokes, you actually go straight in and straight out. You're literally using the tips of the, the bristle and you're just going like this. If you do that, you don't fill in any of the holes. If you brush it, it's too thick and you fill in the holes and then sound can't come out. Once this is, if this is the color you're going to do, or just do the natural, this, you probably, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's actually a little recess all the way around the entire speaker. And this, what you do is you start at the bottom, 
press it in just a little bit. See how I just lined up right there? Work your way across, press in a little bit, and it'll tend to pop itself back out. But as you go up, now when you reach the top, you'll see where it doesn't look like it's going to fit, and it's meant to be a friction fit. So you actually have to take and push down just a little bit in one corner to get the grill in there. And you're not bending it, you're just you're literally pushing it. And you pop it in like that, and you pop it in like that. So hope this has been really helpful to you. Um, I love, as you can tell, I love doing this stuff. I've been doing it a long time. I love seeing people get great results. So the, thanks for uh, watching this. And if you've got any questions, please give us a call. We really are happy to help. We're here seven days a week. Thank you very much.